show. It's Monday. We want to thank PCT Cleaning for allowing us, giving us this beautiful studio. Now, today is one of my favorite shows. Well, wait a minute. Every show I do is a favorite show, but today, this is one of a, a personal journey of mine. We're here with the doctor, John C. Lipman. Lipman, Dr. Lipman. This is the guy who's been the answer to everyone's prayers. And for those who don't know Dr. Lipman, he is basically, well, let me tell my story first before I get into it. <clears throat> this is personal for me and I don't have a problem sharing with it. I suffered at one point with fibroids. I was bleeding profusely, almost needed blood transfusion, I was passing out. Whenever I would walk, I would constantly ask my husband, and I'm sure you heard this story, these stories, uh, walk behind me, make sure I'm not leaking, or and things like that. And I was having terrible menstrual cramps, horrible menstrual cramps. I would constantly call out sick, everything. And um, I went to several doctors, and I was told that I needed a hysterectomy. I freaked out, and I'm like, what do you need a hysterectomy? I'm healthy! My womb is okay! Why do I need a hysterectomy? And I've gone through, and I'm going to be honest, I went through so many different doctors that I actually contemplated it. I really did. And lo and behold, I lucked up, and I'm going to say lucked up, on this marvelous man, Dr. Littman. He's with Atlanta Fibroid Center. And when I get through, y'all are not gonna just call me. You guys are gonna run down. And because you guys know when I bring someone on the show and we're talking, it's honest and it's authentic. Dr. Littman, I've never said this to you, but I'm gonna tell you now. You saved my freaking life, you saved my life, you saved my marriage, you saved my sanity, you saved me killing folks. Because you, you think you're going crazy, and I don't mean literally going out and killing people, that's just a figure of speech, let me just say that. But um, I need to ask you, why did you decide to do this? Because I'm telling you, so many of my sisters, my friends out there, have actually had this directed. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's, your struggle is not uncommon. You see it all the time. Uh, a number of women, their whole life is revolved around their menstrual period. And the periods are horrible, they're very heavy, they're long lasting, um, with episodes of blood gushing out, flooding, clots, it's very scary. You see this amount of blood come out of you all of a sudden, you're not sure what's going on, why it's happening. Um, the most common reason why women have heavy periods are these benign tumors called fibroids. Uh, it's a very common tumor in a lot of women, but it's particularly common in women of color. African American women, 80% of adult African American women have these benign fibroids. And they cause a lot of misery, as you described. Uh, a lot of women will bleed very heavily each month. Um, they will become anemic. Um, and when with anemia, is basically a low iron and hemoglobin. They're putting out more blood than they can replace. And so they become tired, they become weak. Um, they may have migraine-like headaches. They may chew or crave ice. Um, palpitations, heart racing, uh, may get lightheaded or faint. Uh, and it's, it's scary. Um, and so a woman who is continuing to lose this much blood every month, it wears on them. It wears on them not only physically, as you say, they become weak and tired, but it wears on them mentally because they have to know where every bathroom is. They have to extra changes of clothes. They can never wear white, ever. And they're constantly having to change and have all this padding and gear and clothing. It, it, it's a physical drain and it's a psychological, mental drain. And so when people are in that position and they're told to have a hysterectomy, um, even though they don't want surgery and they don't want to lose their womb, they are at a point where it's like, okay, Go ahead, take it. And so the simple message that I have tonight to share is that no matter what your doctor has told you, if you're suffering with fibroids, you absolutely do not need a hysterectomy. Repeat that again, please. No matter what your doctor tells you, 
If you're suffering with fibroids, you do not need a hysterectomy. There is a tremendous procedure that I've been performing here in Atlanta over 23 years now, almost 24 years, called uterine fibroid embolization, UFE. Some people call it uterine artery embolization, UAE, it's the same procedure. It's a completely non-surgical, outpatient procedure. Patients come into our center in the morning. It takes me about 30 to 45 minutes to perform. They sleep through it. There's a recovery of about four, maybe five hours in our center. And they go home, not only with their uterus, with just a bandage at the top of the right leg where we go in. Mm -hmm. That is so true because now that I'm thinking about this, I think I proposed to you because somehow when I got, you know, sedated or whatever it was, I think I did propose to you. So forgive me. And I hope your wife forgives me for doing that because the drugs did that. So, you know, I, I just want to apologize now. But yeah. you're right because you're the only doctor, you know, coming from a medical background and I researched, I went to so many doctors for consultations and everyone told me I had to have a hysterectomy on your wall and I remember talking to you about it and you said no and I'm like no this guy's nuts what is he talking about no I saw four or five doctors and he's telling me no and you actually it was a sign of relief for me it was like I was searching and searching because I wanted to hear no and you actually told me no you then told me the statistics exactly what you just said that it wasn't necessary my question to you is what made you decide to want to get into this field? How did you, did you just say, I want to be a doctor and this is what I want to do? Well, get into that. Uh, I trained, at, well, I went to medical school at Georgetown and then I did my radiology training at Brigham and Women's Hospital. It's one of the Harvard hospitals and it has a very strong women's health. So I've always been kind of interested in women's health. But when this procedure, I, I had been embolizing other tumors for some time when I came to Atlanta. But when I heard of this group in France that embolized fibroid tumors, um, that was kind of a game changer. Um, how it got discovered is a group in France decided to embolize fibroids prior to hysterectomy to make it an easier surgery because these tumors are very vascular. So they would embolize them. And because the system in France is socialized, they would wait six, seven, and eight weeks or so before they would get their hysterectomy. Well, while they were waiting, their symptoms went away. So somebody said, well, do we really need the hysterectomy because these, these women are, are doing fine now with just the embolization alone. So that researcher called UCLA and said, you better get the interventional radiologist at UCLA to, to check this out and see if this works as they say it does in France. And the, the interventional radiologist at UCLA was Scott Goodwin. He, he did the first UFE procedure here in the United States, and he spoke at a meeting that I was speaking at, so I got a chance to talk to him, and it seemed like the real deal, so I brought it back here to Atlanta. I did the first one here in Georgia, and have done more than, supposedly, so they say, I've done more of these UFE procedures than anyone worldwide. So we've done over 7,000, uh, so I've saved at least 7,000 uteruses. Um, we've had a number of children born after UFE. I've had three sets of twins born after. In fact, I just saw a woman not that long ago, earlier this year, who, she was 38 when I saw her originally, and she was basically in tears because her gynecologist told her she had to have a hysterectomy, and she didn't want one, and he was surprised like, that she was reluctant because that would end her misery. And she said, well, I'm considering I may want to have a child someday. And he's like, you're 38 and single. That, that ship sailed. You know, like, forget that. And she was devastated, obviously. It was a very crass thing to say. It was a horrible thing to say. In fact, I remember apologizing for that crass physician as, as a physician myself. I can't imagine talking to a patient like that. But anyway, I told her, I didn't know if you, you know, you'll get pregnant one day. I don't know if you'll have a child. Let's work on getting you better. I, I feel very confident I can help your fibroid symptoms, your horrible periods, your pelvic pain. Let's just get you well and just see where it goes. So we did the embolization procedure. And after the procedure, not long after, she met a man in church. Mm. 
They started dating, they got married, and lo and behold, they had a baby. And she sent me the picture of baby Jalen, and I still have it. Um, and, you know, we put it up on the wall, and I had the original, and uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. We, we, we were celebrating. And she was saying how I remember I was this close, and she would hold her fingers. I was this close because I was worn down, I was weak, I was tired. Like all the stuff we talked about earlier, the mental anguish, I was this close to getting a hysterectomy. And then I wouldn't have had the miracle baby. So she had baby Jalen in 2001. That's the picture, and I have a picture. So about a month or two ago, there's a knock at the door, and um, my front office staff comes back, it's like 5.30 in the evening, and she says, there's somebody here to see you. I'm like, oh, I thought we were finishing the patients today. She's like, yeah, the patients are we're done, but it's somebody else. She says she has to see you. I'm like, okay, who is it? She's like, I don't know, come see. So I walk out, and, and it's this woman. And, and we hugged, and I was like, oh, what, you know, what are you doing here? And she's like, ah, oh, I want to show you something. I'm like, okay. She says, come outside. So I we walked outside my office door, and she was parked right in front of our center. And the door opens, and out pops this really tall, handsome young man. It's oh Jalen. <laughs> Jalen is now a senior in high school. He's, he had just graduated. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I ran in. I got the picture of him. We're holding up the picture, and I've got some new pictures. And it's just, you know, it's just wonderful. I mean, you know, he's off going to go to college and going to do great things, and it's just... Yeah. See, and I want to tell you, for anyone out there that's suffering with fibroids, I don't care if you're in Zimbabwe, take, get on the plane and come to Atlanta. This is this was my personal doctor. I preferred people to him. I mean, I had a young lady, her name was Adria, because she said I could use her name, that she was told to have a hysterectomy, and over and over and over again, they were telling her this, and I said, no, you got to see Dr. Lippin, you got to see Dr. Lippin. She went, and the recovery was really smooth for me, you know, but again, I was in the hospital. It was horrible. I know, I know you hear the stories. It's one of those dirty little secrets. I'm serious, because a lot of people don't want to talk about fibroids and what we go through. Sure. It messes up your entire life. You, you miss work, you miss school, you have no life, you don't want to do anything, you don't want to wear white. You always have someone behind you, walking behind you. You go to bed and you're wearing diapers, these yeah. over, it's just disgusting. Yeah. And for me, you gave me my life back. Yeah. And I gotta say this, so I'm telling you guys, Please call Dr. Littman. I'm not getting paid for this. You guys know. I don't play that. But I believe in sharing is caring. And you guys know I do the sharing is caring. And why not share with me? Preserve your, you know, preserve your womb. You, just to see that out of everyone, and I've gone high and low, and I'll repeat that again. You told me I did not have to do this. Right. You told me that you could help me. And you helped me. Right? had the procedure, it went well, and I referred other people. Now, one of the questions I want to ask, because people are, how does, is it covered by insurance? I it know, is. but I just want you to yes. talk about that. Yes. It's covered the, by insurance. The procedure is covered by every insurance company. I'm not aware of any insurance that doesn't cover it. And we take everything, so that's what I know, including Medicare and Medicaid. A number of specialists okay. don't take Medicaid. Let, do. Okay, come closer. Come closer. I know you can hear me. Let's turn up the hearing aids for those who can't hear well, okay? He said Medicaid, C-A-I-D, Medicaid. He takes Medicaid. Being in that field, there's so many doctors that refuse to take Medicaid. And to see that you're still one of the few doctors who's a specialist that's taking Medicaid, that's admirable. That's really admirable. I know, okay, let me walk you through, let me walk you through the first visit. You go in, because you know most people don't. Had the consultation. It was this beautiful office manager, I think it was. She had a conversation with me. I thought she was, I was leaving with my best friend, okay? Well, well that's important. Right? We, we want that experience. I mean, a lot of women, and men too, don't get that experience in healthcare. I mean, we work very diligently. We want people to think this was the greatest experience I've ever had in healthcare because I'm just not used to this. I, I might be used to this if I go to the Four Seasons or the Ritz Carlton. But when I go to my doctor, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not used to getting this. And Concierge, that's what right. I felt. I'm like, wait a minute, this is insurance. What's going on here? 
you know, she made me feel, she then she answered all my questions. I sat with you and I asked you a ton of questions. And then she did not make me feel like, okay, time's up, time's up. It wasn't like that. Well, we don't have a schedule like that. I mean, we have so many patients and we tell them, until your questions are all answered, we're not finished. So we, some consultations are 15, 20 minutes, some are 30, 40 minutes, some are an hour, and we go longer than an hour. We just, it's, uh, and it, you're is, it is what it is. We, we want people to be comfortable about the decisions they make. It's an important one. It's about their health. So it's really important. And we want them to be absolutely comfortable about you know, our relationship and going forward and, and the choices and the options that they're choosing. It's really important to know all your options, not just the ones I can provide you, but all the options. You look at the risks and benefits of each of those options. And if it happens to be that UFE is the way you want to go, we're happy to do that. Now, after you do the UFE pursuit, no, right, let me step back. Okay, I did my con had my consultation with him, spoke with the office manager, then I had someone else having a conversation with me. I didn't feel like it was an assembly line. It was like the office was my office. I'm like, where are the other patients? It was all about me. And you guys know I love when it's all about me. So I felt really good with that experience because Coming from practice management, I know all that stuff, and your office, I'm gonna let you know now, that was an A, and I don't really get a lot of A's out there. I felt really comfortable. Your wife, let's talk about your wife. She is phenomenal. She calls back, she responds. I don't know how you caught her, but you met a people, okay? Yeah, I took the best thing out of Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You no, know, but we work very diligently. In fact, um, I hire people for the practice based on not IQ, but HQ. And HQ is hospitality quotient. It's not something that I coined. Um, actually, a restaurateur in New York City, um, I read his book, and that's how he hires. And so um, that's what we do. Basically, hospitality quotient is the measurement of someone's ability to enjoy pleasing others. And so I've interviewed a lot of people for different positions in my practice, but they have, they have to have the absolute highest HQ. I can teach you the things I need you to learn, but what I can't teach you is what you already know, and that's you know your ability, your empathy, your ability to please others. That's either you got it or you don't. And if you don't, you don't work for us. So after you have the procedure to perform, you have this thing that I hear you guys talk about, something white. What's, let's talk about that. Well, a number of years ago, we started the Wear White Pants Group because women that suffer with fibroids because of their heavy periods, they can't wear white ever. It's not like after Memorial Day, it's never. And so um, when they come back after their UFE, they can wear white whenever they want. Their periods are normal again. So. We want to celebrate that, first off, and second, we want to encourage them to bring friends to educate them. So we have a couple times a year, we have these wear white pants events where we invite them out and the women rock the white and it's uh, a lot of fun. It's uh, sisterhood and fellowship and trying to spread the word that you don't need to have hysterectomy if you're suffering with fibroids. In fact, a more recent thing that we're doing now with hashtags, since everything is social media now, yeah. we have a hashtag, don't lose your you. Don't lose you are you. Um, and uh, Sarah Elizabeth Reed, the former first lady of Atlanta, along with Cynthia Bailey, have been telling people to use that hashtag. Um, it's all about saving your uterus because if you lose your you, your uterus, you often lose your Y O U. What makes you you is a lot of it has to do with your uterus, the epicenter of being a woman, their womb. And when they lose that through a hysterectomy, they're a different woman. They're not the same woman psychologically. There's a lot of women that struggle sexually. There's a lot of bone loss issues after hysterectomy, urinary leaking. Bottom line, it's just not necessary. <laughs> just not necessary. You don't need it. If you have uterine cancer, hysterectomy is appropriate. But uterine fibroids, as we mentioned, are benign tumors. There's no reason to undergo major surgery when you have something so phenomenal like UFE. Well, I'm going to talk about another being plant based. Okay. Confession time. So, 
I decided to, I'm going to eat some chicken. I want to see this chicken's all about. So I noticed after a while, my tummy started to get bigger. I started feeling these symptoms, not immediately, but I just noticed my body was going through a change. So I started eating chicken and fried chicken and all this kind of stuff, and I'm starting to get migraines, tummy's getting bigger, um, my cycle is getting crazy, and I'm like, what in the world's going on? So I went to, I did go to an acupuncturist, and I was constantly getting like um, 100 needles in my abdomen. I would get that done. But it, st it was helping me a little, but something wasn't right. So she mentioned, Jackie, you know, you do, you know, fibroids possibly. She's like, something's not right. She was, she said, no, so to speak, stagnation of blood. That's what she said. There was some stagnation of blood. So anyway, I did all that other stuff and I lucked up, you know, thank God I found you. But I noticed after we did the UFV, I went back to my plant-based diet or lifestyle. My stomach got smaller, and I know it has something to do all obviously with the procedure, but I started regaining myself sure. again. I felt, oh my God. So what I want to talk, let's talk about plant-based in your opinion. Oh, sure. no. With plant-based slash vegan slash raw, let's talk about that. Go well, ahead and cough for it. Um, <laughs> well, first off, nobody knows exactly where fibroids come from. But once they arrive, mm -hmm. they grow with estrogen, progesterone, hormones, particularly estrogen. One of the ways that we can affect estrogen is through diet and exercise. One of the reasons why African American women disproportionately suffer with fibroids over other racial groups is that they, have, in general, have more body fat than other racial groups. Estrogen is stored in fat. So one of the first things that we can do to help women is to encourage them to exercise. Vegan is great, but if they can moderate the hormone offenders in the food supply, and you mentioned one of them, chicken, red meat, dairy, um, if you can at least moderate those things or substitute, you can have your chicken, but maybe do it free range organic versus say something that may be clumped up with hormones. Um, and so there are workarounds. And if you can exercise, eat well, make a little bit better choices. Mom's always said, eat your fruits and vegetables, you know, your colored mm -hmm. vegetables. Well, one of the reasons, one of the out products of that, colored fruits and vegetables have compounds in them called flavonoids. Mm -hmm. And flavonoids block estrogen synthesis. So it's just one more reason we can have like an anti-estrogen approach through eating better, making better choices, losing excess body fat. You will improve your fibroid symptoms for sure. Maybe not enough that you wouldn't, you know, in the severe cases, it's gonna make things better, but maybe not enough. But in milder cases, that may be all you need, and that's great. Um, but for those that, you know, need more, then obviously there's the UFE, but um, you can absolutely improve your fibroid health and your overall cardiovascular health by making better food choices. And so, again, we're see, it all boils down to what you're eating as well. As you said, no one knows where fibroid comes from. But what we can do is start implementing a healthy lifestyle in order to not just get rid of it, but just implementing a healthy lifestyle. Now, what, how, how long have you been doing this procedure? Uh, almost 24 years now. Now you go from what I what I like when I'm talking to you. You've gone to Tuskegee. Talk about the the, the tours you do or your speaking engagements. Well, that people do. that know me know that I'll speak to anybody that'll listen. Um, we've spoken to nu numerous groups and, and places all over the country. Um, we see patients from not only all over Georgia but all over the. United States, but even other countries, Africa, the Caribbean. So people will travel for an expertise. And we are also out there educating people all over about this. Uh, because the condition disproportionately suffers, you know, disproportionately seen in African-American women, I would say we spend a lot of time in the African-American community. 
I volunteer at Morehouse School of Medicine. I interview potential medical students for Morehouse. Um, I've given grand rounds at Morehouse and at Grady and um, Spelman. Um, I'll speak to African American sorority groups, Alphas, Deltas, um, Mocha Moms. I was a keynote for the Black Nurses Association here in Atlanta, um, the National Association of Black Journalists. When they were meeting in Atlanta, I was speaking with the Dean of Morehouse School of Medicine on a women's health panel, Tuskegee, uh, other HBCUs. Pretty much, as they say, if there's a group of women out there, um, speak. I'll speak. So it's that, it's that important. And that's good because I have, in my private Facebook groups, I had said, told people that you were going to be on, so I received several questions. So that's why I'm asking you these questions because I had one lady, she did not want to go on our live to ask the question because she didn't want anyone to know that she suffers from five minutes. I'm not being judgmental. I just, for me, I'm like, why not? But it's a no, purpose, and you know? I understand. I mean, mm -hmm. people, it's an embarrassing yes. topic to talk about. And yes. that's one of the things we want to kind of break those barriers down because um, women need to tell other women. I was at a group of over 300 women yesterday. The Classy Living Society had their red dress gala. It was phenomenal. And one of the things we talked about is, you know, women talking to each other in a, in a sisterhood because because this stuff is kind of embarrassing, mm -hmm. we've been reluctant to talk about it. Um, there have been a lot of our patients that didn't know their mom suffered with fibroids and had a hysterectomy. Um, it was just female problems, they didn't talk about mm -hmm. it. And now the daughter is suffering and didn't even realize that we're members of her family had already gone through hysterectomy and no one ever talked about it, just something that just kind of happened privately. And we're trying to break that. We don't, you don't need hysterectomy anymore. It's, it's unnecessary for fibroids. We want to educate people, talk to each other, you know, so they know their options. And so when their doctor tells them that they need a hysterectomy, they'll know otherwise that you don't. It's a debilitating illness. Now, one of the questions I was asked to really talk to you, you know, to get your opinion on, what would you tell the significant other, the man, the woman, or whatever, the significant other for that person, because it's debilitating for both. Absolutely. Because there's a lot of things we can't do. So what would you tell that significant other? What oh, advice? Well, in speaking all over to women's groups, we love it when men are there and show up. Because while it directly affects the woman, obviously, it affects the man. There is no question. In fact, if you follow the Real Housewives of Atlanta, yeah, and Cynthia Cynthia, Bailey, yeah, I saw that. Um, mm -hmm. Her marriage was mm -hmm. suffering because of it because she was still at that time. I know they're now divorced, but at the time she was in love with Peter, um, and Peter didn't understand. All he knew was they weren't intimate, but she was going through these horrible periods where blood was just running down her legs and she was tired and weak and anemic and all the fiber-related symptoms. So sex is exercise, and if you're tired and weak from anemia, from heavy periods, and you're wearing like adult diapers, you're not feeling very sexual. So intimacy kind of goes out the window. But from a male perspective, they didn't understand, they didn't know any of all that stuff. All they could see from their viewpoint was, we weren't intimate, she must not love me. And that couldn't have been farther from the truth. And so once she had the UFE procedure, and she was grinning from ear to ear when she came back in a three-month follow-up, and all of her symptoms were gone, she, she said that I gave her her sexy man. So I, I have that in my pocket. I would kind of pull that out sometimes. And, I gave Cynthia Bailey her sexy back. That's got to be worth something. She's it, uh, an incredibly sexy. And woman. it's funny coming, going into your office to see how many women have gone through this, the procedure, yeah. and it was kept quiet. And I, because I was looking on the walls, I called the Wall of Fame, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So now people are talking about it, but still, it's not. It, it's chatter it's not loud enough in my opinion because i still think there's that stigma that's attached to well, it is you said it's an embarrassing topic and certainly we can't tell people who we've right. seen unless they like cynthia came out on her show and she was very she took that on and she was very brave to you know because she's in beauty and fashion mm -hmm. um, and this is far from beauty and fashionable and so 
you know, to her credit, she was very brave and took that on as her mission and she was going to educate women through her platform and I'm very grateful that she did. Um, but there are lots of other people that choose to be more private. Can you tell us your location, where you located, how people want to get in contact? Because I'm telling you guys, call Dr. Littman. Don't, don't walk, run to Dr. Littman. I won't steer you wrong. This message is sponsored by the Women Show. Okay? So how can they get in touch with you? Our center is in Smyrna. Um, we're at 3670 Highlands Parkway in Smyrna. It's right off the South Cobb and 285 exit. Highlands Parkway is the first street off that exit. So we're easy to find. It's very convenient and accessible. Uh, our website is probably the best way to learn more about fibroids and about the UFE procedure. There's lots of information on our website. And that's ATLII.com. It stands for Atlanta Interventional Institute. That's the big the practice. Atlanta Fibroid Center is kind of a subsidiary. So if you go to ATLII.com, that's the website. And then Instagram, if they're more visual, they want to see kind of visual things, it's more of the community events, more of the video kind of testimonials. Um, that's Dr. Underscore Lipman. So it's D R underscore L I P M A N. So again, I need you guys, if you have any comments, because I know we're going to have the after show or, you know, the replays, the shares, and things like that. This is Dr. Lipman. You guys, I'm telling you, call his office at least, at least come in for a consultation. Please do not think about the hysterectomy yet. Please don't think about doing a hysterectomy yet. See Dr. Lipman first. I promise you, it's not a waste of time. He is going to save your life like that. He saved mine because Lord knows, I was driving everybody crazy. My pastor was about to do, um, what is that thing they do when you have the devil inside of you? An exorcism. An exorcism. He was so close to doing an exorcism. I remember I was in the ambulance because I passed out. Yeah. Because at the, I was at the, I was in the um, parking lot in church, in the church parking lot, and passed out. Next thing I know, the ambulance is there. My poor husband looks like, oh my God, what's going on? So he saved my life, and I could have sworn my pastor did the exorcism thing yeah. on me, and I'm like, okay. So you know, I, I get it. Whatever now. works. I'm glad you're. Well, back you helped. Home again. Yeah, but you helped because I'm telling you, my life. I knew what day was gonna happen. I knew I should not be outside because then I'm angry, I'm irritable, and I'm just just nasty because people don't understand what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And and then you can't find other women. At least when it was when I was going through, I couldn't find other women who was going through the same thing that I was going through. And sure. no one wanted to talk because I'm an open book. They didn't want to talk about it. So now, you know, now that I'm doing this, people are reaching out to me. They're asking me. And, and, and here's the more important thing we need to talk about. It's almost like when you're, when you have a debil debilitating illness, you will try anything, anything on the market. I tried pills, potions, and everything. Well, I met some guys, some people, who um, promised me if I took some drops, it would help. Yeah, there's a lot of phony stuff. Mm. I mean, because people are, are feeling the way they're feeling when they're suffering with fibroids, they're desperate and they, they, they want to do anything short of surgery. And I understand that. Um, I wouldn't want to have hysterectomy either. And so you feel like you want to try something. And if it sounds too good to be true, you know, uh, it often is. Now, the UFE procedure is different. Um, it's something that's been around a long time. It's medically proven safe and effective. There's tw over 20 years of medical research, scientific data proving its efficacy. So it's completely different than these things like you'll see on the internet or pills or, you know, potions or drops or any of that stuff. Um, but they prey on people's desperation, just like there are stuff for male pattern baldness. You know, guys don't want to be bald. Take this magic pill, grow hair. I mean, it's you know, it's 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 unfortunate that people are getting preyed upon. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things you said earlier about the consultation, it is really important to come in for a consultation because a lot of times um, women might hear about UFE and they bring that information to their physician. The physician says, ah. 
your fibroids are too big, mm -hmm. or you have too many fibroids, mm -hmm. you're not, you won't be a candidate, don't waste your money. I would say come in for the consult, it's never too big, never too many, I've heard all sorts of urban myths about UFE, um, come in for the consult and let's talk about it, because that's not difficult to do, it's easy, um, and in some cases it may save your life. Well, I can say this now, because I don't care, because um, it is my show. Because of you, I fired my doctor. Yeah. And, well, it's not because of you, but I had all the information, necessary information, because I was pushed, gently pushed, to get the um, hysterectomy. And I, it was cut from all sides. And even at one point, my husband even said, you know, Jackie, maybe you need to do that. And I looked at him like, hush your mouth. You know, I almost did like one of those, you know, um, black exploitation movies back in the day. And I'm like, hush your mouth, hush your mouth, hysterectomy. I mean, we don't have a family of cancer. We don't, I don't come from that, or ovarian or, or cervical cancer. So no way am I going to do it. But now these doctors still today, it's so nonchalant, nonchalant, like, okay, just get a hysterectomy. People are talking about it like, oh, I just had a hysterectomy. One of my girlfriends had a hysterectomy in um, Louisiana, and she said no one talked about this, and she said she would do great, but she's still having problems now. Right. I mean hysterectomy is the second most common surgery done in the United States and it's most commonly done for benign fibroids and we've got to change that because not only is hysterectomy unnecessary in some women it has pretty significant consequences you know, it changes them psychologically it changes them sexually there's a lot of complications that can happen they can nick vital structures like the bladder like the ureter the bowel um, and so it's just not necessary you don't have to suffer through any of the risks and long recovery of surgery, you can get your symptom relief that you're looking for. You can avoid all the surgical baggage and keep your parts. It's a triple win if yes. you get the UFE procedure. Yes, because I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm, I'm positive. So after that was done, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. I mean, I was just uncomfortable for a minute, but I'm a wuss. Let's face it. You touch me, I'm crying. I'm a wuss. So... But the recovery went well. My husband was just, he says, wow, you morphed into another person. And I'm like, I'm still me, but I guess I got nicer. And um, I got to thank you for that. You, you know, and I want to thank your wife because to see that she's passionate about what you guys are doing. And I really got to thank you. I'm looking off camera because Miss Lippman, Mrs. Lippman is just phenomenal. She has been, we've been trying to get this interview together for the longest. And when I say she's been calling back and making sure we're going to do this interview, we're going to do this interview, we'll figure it in, we'll, you know, we'll figure out how we can get this done. And I really want to thank you guys because I'm telling you, you're like my, um, I'm telling you, I'm your champion. I'm out there slinging your words, saying your name, Dr. Littman, Dr. Littman. I have to remember it's for fibroids because I'm calling your name for everything. You got heart issues, Dr. Littman. If you have head issues, Dr. Littman. You're the it doctor for everything, but I do know it's basically for fibroids. So, you know, again, now, since you, you brought this procedure here, where do you see your practice within fibroids? Well, I mean, we've just hired a new associate, so I'm excited for her to join us. Um, she'll start next month, and uh, so that's a, that's a sign of growth, and we hope to be uh, announcing some exciting stuff, hopefully soon, where, but she's going to join us. We're going to see how that goes and start to spread, hopefully, uh, into, into other areas. And, Will we get some scoops so we and, can announce it on the show? Sure. Okay, yes, yes. You are just, again, I want to thank you for everything that you've done. And for those who just tuned in, because I know we're going to get some after the show, can you please give us your address, your contact information, sure. your our, social media? Our office phone number is 770-953-2600. So 770-953-2600. And we're located at 3670 Highlands Parkway in Smyrna. And website is atlii.com and Instagram dr underscore Lipman. And if you have any questions, if you have any questions about my journey, because I'm definitely going to be doing a blog about it, my journey with this and how I met this wonderful man. Because I'm telling you, it is it, it goes deep. It goes deep. Where I was going through depression, 
I was going through so much that I thought there's something wrong with me, but I realized there was a need at, you know, at a certain point. I had to take care of this. It was almost like a band-aid. So I had to take care of this, as she said, and I did that. So if you want to email me and ask me any questions, you can email me at womenoworthy um, at att.net, womenoworthy at att.net. We're on Snapchat. We're the Women Are Worthy Network on Snapchat. On Facebook, we're the Women Are Worthy Show. On Instagram, we're the Women Are Worthy Show. Y'all, we're on YouTube. I need y'all to like, subscribe. I need you to talk about it. I need you to comment. Our YouTube channel is the Women Are Worthy Network. The Women Are Worthy Network. So don't forget to like our page, comment, share. Because you guys know sharing is caring. And that's what we're all about in this community. Sharing wonderful things. And we have a champion. And I meant to tell you this before you and your wife. I meant to tell you this before you actually started the show that I received a phone call from a judge. You guys are actually adopted in the Women Worthy family. Yes, 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 yes. So you guys were approved. So without further ado, I'm definitely going to talk more about you because I want more people, women, to understand that they don't have to get a hysterectomy. And you are, yes, you are a male doctor, and that shouldn't matter because, again, you brought a procedure from France to Georgia. You know, I'm like, Georgia? So I want to thank you for what you're doing. I want to thank you and your wife. I'm, I'm looking off camera because this life's so special to me because I'm telling you, when I say, guys, customer service starts from, whenever there's a sucky, and I'm going to use the word sucky customer service, it starts from the top. It doesn't start from the bottom. And his wife, and it's just... Just a wonderful human being. She treated me like royalty. Okay, so you ruined me for all the doctor's offices. You have, okay? So I just want to explain that to you. So I'm telling you, I mean, you can't miss, you know, not going to Dr. Lippman. Mrs. Lippman is phenomenal. The office manager, everyone's phenomenal there. So without further ado, we want to thank you guys for tuning into the Women Are Worthy show. Um, tune in next week. We're going to have a, another great show. But um, I'm definitely going to be talking to you guys some more on my blogs regarding tonight's show and my journey and the man that saved my life, the man who saved my marriage. We're now married this last month, 29 years. Right. So we probably awesome. would have lost it at 26 years. <laughs> so we want to thank you for that because you saved, you gave me myself back. Oh. And I know you're oh. humble and all that, but... You gave me myself back in. I'm allowed to do the things that I want to do. And I just want to thank you publicly and um, privately. I want to thank you. Well, I mean, I, I love doing what I do, and this is why. I mean, I love coming to work and love hearing stories about this. Yes. So, okay, y'all, we'll see you next week, same time. Don't be square. We want you guys have to have a great weekend. Be safe and tune in on Monday. We'll tell you who our guest is going to be. We'll put the flyers up and everything. Like, subscribe. Follow our YouTube channel, The Women Worthy Network. Like, subscribe, comment, and share, share, share. Share is caring. Bye, guys.